Hello guys, welcome to the new the new reviews videos. We're starting off today with a cold and dark to start tutorial in the Majestic Software Dash 8 Q400. Uh, this isn't the actual flows, this, and we're going to skip a few things such as the FMC, autopilot, uh, arc do setup, which is the radios for those of you who don't know and fire and test protection systems all those kind of things this is just going to be a very fast sort of fast flow to start push back tutorial so uh, let's go get started so we're in the uh, captain's seat in the dash 8 and uh, we're fully cold dark as you can see so we're just going to run through a few checks to make sure everything is in order so the first thing you want to do is check that the spoiler switch is into taxi so it's down right here which it is then we're going to come over to the, uh, the centre console and check that the parking brake is set, which it is. The control lock, which is this black lever here, which stops the engines from going into the alpha range, needs to come up to on. Condition levers here need to be off and fuel off, which they are. Flaps need to be up, of course. Okay, so we can begin. Let's go to the overhead. So, start from the top left to the bottom right, we do a small flow. Uh, just for the minute with what we need so we want to start with the batteries the top bar which is in this uh, sort of tiger striped sort of area the battery master on the on the right goes on followed by the main battery auxiliary battery and standby battery you'll hear um, the self test of the GPWS going on in a minute so just ignore that generator 1 and generator 2 need to go on and followed by the main bus tie okay down to the ice protection system right here we don't need any of this because uh, basically you know we need engines and bleed air for that and pitot statics we don't turn those on until after engine start heat in the windshield area windshield heat needs to go to warm up and the pilot side window heat needs to go on flight data recorder here is in the normal position we don't bank really angle. mess with that there we go bank angle uh, pfd altimeter units your own preference but i use just feet because we're not in America or anything like that, so we don't need meters as well, things like that. We don't need to know that either. Uh, our pressurization looks good, zero on the differential, altitude is set, of course, I can't really read it right now, it's too far, and our climb rate is nothing because we're not sending or climbing. Exterior lights, we don't need any of these three at the moment, landing lights or taxi lights. Over to the lights, panel lighting, we don't need any, I don't need any of this anyway because I'm in the day, it depends on your own time setting and preference. APU control, we don't need any of this for now. Uh, ignition engine start, we'll be doing that soon, so we'll just flick those to normal on the ignition. Landing out needs to be set if you're doing a flight, etc. If this is just, but I doubt you will because you don't have to start it, that's why you're here. <laughs> okay, you'll see this fault light, don't worry, that'll go away soon. Uh, exterior lights down here, we need just a position light on. Ignore my Facebook. Okay, AC control. Uh, we don't need any of this on at the moment. We're going to connect the. What we're going to do is we're going to connect the external power, and we're going to basically start the engine, the right engine number two, on the external power and let that idle. And then, whilst that's happening, we'll start the APU up, and we'll push back, of course, disconnecting from the GPU, and start the left engine, and then you know flow through, and then you'll be ready for takeoff. So next down is the air conditioning panel. We're going to switch the recirc fan on and bleed one and two and set the bleed, this black knob, to minimum and forget the rest, we don't need to go through everything else, we'll go through that in the next tutorials packs need to remain off until after engine start, fasten seatbelt signs on and no smoking signs on, down here and the emergency exit lights need to be to arm, so that's one down okay, so next step we want to go and switch the FMC's on and the ARCDU which is the radio section so uh, we're going to pan down to the FMC's just now and switch them both on by these switches here so on the left one it's here it's the same for the right one it says on slash off dim so switch that one on and switch this one on now we'll now run through their self tests meanwhile we can go and switch on the arc dues which are the videos down here if just flick both of these knobs to on here and here And then uh, what we're going to do is to come back to the uh, FMCs, obviously wait till they've done their little tests. Meanwhile what we'll do is we'll come up here, uh, just next to the uh, engine display, we've got the hydraulic controls, what need to come on just before engine start, and that's standby hydraulic pressure. 
and PTU control the interposed to come on. Uh, the fuel control section, we do that after engine start. So hopefully it's done that. There we go. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to come gentlemen. down to the on board our dash wait there. We'll accept the right FMC and We're then we'll come down the to the, the luggage FMC. Load on board. Press uh, accept. We'll be able to get underway in press data. On behalf of the entire Got an MSG amber light up here, so just press MSG and then press it again, which is down here. Come up to services and press request on GPU. And then of course it will pop up within a few seconds and start up. So what you want to do is come to the overhead. And then on the DC control area, external power needs to go on. And on the AC control area, external power needs to go on as well. And then uh, when that's connected, what we'll do now is we'll go down. And just to check that it is actually working, uh, you can go across to the... Just cancel these caution lights by clicking them. And what you can do is you can come here to the electrical panel on the first officer side. And you are now seeing green light in at the top. DC power, external power on, and AC external power on. And you'll then hear all the air conditioning and packs and uh, air conditioning will kick in. That's not actually the true way of indicating that the external power is on, so I'm told that when it's connected, it can give those lights anyway without giving you power. So you, the actual test is you come to the overhead and uh, the engine intake on the ice protection section, if the green lights pop up, that means you have sufficient power because it's powering those systems. Like I said though, in the next tutorials, we, this kind of point we would be setting up the FMCs and radios, or all that stuff. So uh, we're going to go ahead now and start the right engine because we have the power available to aircraft. So what we want to do is the ignition on the right engine, of course this is engine 1, this is engine 2, is in normal, both of them. So the selector knob here, switch even, right click it to number 2 and you'll see the select amber light here. Press select and it'll say start and then come all the way down to the, well the centre console. The number 2 condition lever needs to go up to start and further. Then what you can do is you can monitor the engine rise, which is torque will stay at about three. Uh, the NH RPM will go right up to around 60. Crop RPM will idle around 210, and fuel flow will remain at about uh, I can't remember that figure, but it's Good at 100. No and and on behalf of our airline, we would uh, like you'll to see the internal turbine from the to rise. And the flight time today will be approximately two hours. Would you please fasten your seatbelts and Oil refrain from smoking? Check is if you actually want to use any electronic equipment, pressure. we would kindly ask you to contact us first. So right now For we're idle at 210. Landing, these devices must be switched the, off, and the cellular phones that may not be used during the entire time. flight. So we come all the way back to the overhead now, and we're going to start the APU now. So on the APU control you've got five black buttons. The last one actually doesn't work. It's nothing, basically. So the first four you've got power, start, generator and bleed down. Uh, so you want to press power and then start and it will run through a quick self test. All the lights will go on. Yep, there we go. And in a moment you'll see the light become available on gen. So uh, meanwhile, waiting for that, we will go ahead and begin our push. So let's go down to the MCs. Right here you can see we're still on the services area. If you can't remember, just go to data services and it's there. So on the pushback section I'm just going to press straight because I'm going to push back anyway and then I'll come back to you. So uh, back to the well, head now. we are ready for pushback. And the generator will come available in a minute. May we have your attention there we to go. the generator. We are ready now. Please release really pocket This aircraft has uh, six emergency will now exits. Available. Two exits are located in front. So uh, I'll meet you two on the, the wings pushback. Go ahead and push back. But the first thing you want to do actually sign. before you push back is go to the left pilot switch. Down here. Lead to these and those will stay in the bottom right. Each seat is equipped with safety belts. I'll meet you once push back. Okay hey guys, uh, welcome back, we've now pushed back, as you can see, not very well for me. But it's a manual push back using the FMC. So it wasn't really going to be entirely accurate, you can use all your add-ons such as GSX, uh, AES, I tend to not trust those programs with this aircraft though, because it does use an external module to well, do everything basically, and sometimes GSX just does not like it. So now we've pushed back and we've got our right engine idling on starting further. We're going to go ahead and well, basically go through all the checks. Uh, go through all the start checks. 
Uh, we don't really, I'm not going to use checklists today because I feel they'll waste your time and I know you're all probably in a rush to actually get in the air. So that will all come at a later date really. Uh, I can, if you ask me though, I can inbox you links to checklists and flows. For those of you who do get a bit confused and want to do the full thing. So the next step is to go back to the, uh, the left panel switches down here and press back on the nose of the steering there. And it takes about eight seconds to pressurize so on there. So you know, whilst we do that, we'll go back to the overhead, and we'll come through our checks again. And uh, external power here on the DC control needs to go off, and on the AC control, we'll come back and start from the left and all the way down. So ice protection we don't need because we're on the ground, and it is not very cold. And we usually use this when we uh, think we're coming into icing conditions, uh, things such as clouds, etc. The problem with it is, so I, so I know, it takes about 10 minutes to heat up. So they tend to do it a little early, especially on the descent. So when we come down to the pitot static section, these three switches here, put them all on. Stand by one and two. The windshield heat needs to go to normal now. Flight data recorder, all this stuff is all good. So as we checked, taxi light needs to come on. Panel lighting, as I said, as required. Okay, we're going to leave the APU on for a few more, well, for about a few more seconds until we switch all our generators on and our packs. Engine start ignition needs to stay on normal. Uh, the fault light will remain on, you know, just wait until we've actually got our generators running and things like that. What we should have done in the first place, which I did miss out, was we need to put the exterior light, right click it to red and to collision. So that, you know, it, it indicates to ground crew. Sorry about that mistake. Okay, so over to the AC control, generator 1 and generator 2 need to come on. And what you want to do is you want to now pan down and have a look at this, uh, at the, well, caution and advisory lighting system. As you can see, I can't really see it very well, so I'll zoom in for you. Number 2 and number 1 AC generator are still indicated as not on. So we're going to go ahead and flip those, uh, leave those on and come down to the air conditioning. And uh, just while we stop it there, we're going to start the left engine. So, let's select the switch here to number one. Select it on, and then down to the condition lever. Start and further loops. Over to the engines, monitor the engine rise, of course. You can either do the flows before you start the left engine, or you can do them after. Of course, a lot of the stuff will not work, of course, because you need both engines running. Such as generator one runs off engine number one, so the systems that run from generator 1 will not come on, will come alive, as I said. Just wait for that to rise when it gets to 200 now. Then when both engines are idling, I'll give it a few more seconds from the a little bit and fully get to the right away. Okay, so that's alright. So now you want to come back to the condition levers and push them all the way right click them so that it takes both from 850 to 900 to full and then you can come back to the overhead while they uh, while they uh, spool up that basically puts them to full up here so they're fully, they're fully up and running basically okay, so running through again we've done the left side it's all good uh, as i said you know things like the pico static systems they won't start working until we've got both engines running generator here, all the generators will. So we're going to come down, we've got the packs and the, the packs on, turn the packs onto it, there we go, that's what we're there. Fasten seat belts and it's making that on, and when the sensor lights are, all the emergency lights are together on. Um, things are, like I said, uh, when we come down to this panel, and you can see most of the amber lighting is gone. I can tell you that those ones are actually skid. That one is elevator pressure, and that one is parking brake. So that's what we've got to do left, basically. So we want to go ahead and shut the APU down by pressing the two green lights that are on the power and the chip. So right now everything is working with this one full RPM, and it's driving the trip wings. Okay, so when we reach the runway, of course, we will turn the... When you reach the runway, which we're not going to do, because uh, I'm cutting this off as soon as we've worked and started. Both landing lights would go on 
and you can switch the exterior lights from red to empty condition per the signal button. And also, one of you now, if you want to quickly turn the main bus dial, I'm not going to go into what that does and what it means and what stuff. So you can do that at a later date if you want to, or I can just tell you if you pop us a comment or a message over on Facebook that we'll be reviewed. So, back down to the condition view is at the section. Of course, when you taxi, you will leave the condition, uh, the control lock here in because that keeps you in the beta range, so you cannot go into the flight range. Uh, that can I can explain that if you request it. If you've done that, you know. So autopilot section, we're going to flick the yaw damper on. That's it. And then we're going to pan over to the first officer side, cancel the first option, and turn the anti skid on, which is that switch there. Your damper is there.